And so it just keeps spiraling. Before you know it, after three antibiotics deep conventionally for an ear infection, now they're going to two. Yeah. Or they're going to a, a tonsil and endonectomy and they're taking them out. And the problem is, is that, sure, that will band-aid the solution temporarily, but it's not the fix no. because now you just took their first line of defense um, you've now compromised their ears and put holes in them Yep. Um, and expect them just to get better yep. on their own. Welcome to the Experience Miracles podcast, where we help parents find hope, answers, and drug-free help to overcome your child's chronic health challenges. I'm your host, Dr. Tony Ebel, and I'll be sharing my experiences as both a dad and a doctor on every episode. I can take the latest science and neurology of healing and break it down in the most simple and relatable way possible. We'll take on the toughest topics and answer your biggest questions through interviews with other amazing parents and leading experts, leaving you with practical action steps that you can take to help your child heal and thrive. It's time to expect and experience miracles let's get started all right parents welcome back to the experience miracles podcast we have one of our absolute best friends change makers um just real impact makers here and with jessica who will get her full very fancy introduction here i've got it right on my computer um and the fancy schools she went to that is we will get through that and into Really, the meat of this episode, we're going to take on a very important topic for our kids and our family's health, which is the overuse of medications, but specifically the overuse, and you really can just call it the misuse and the abuse, you know, all the things. And we'll show you this research, we'll show you the stats and all that of antibiotics and medications for this, that, and everything for kids. We've known for a long time that we're overdoing this, that we're wrecking our kids' immune systems. When I say we, by the way, I don't mean you as parents. I mean the doctors you are trusted to give these recommendations. So that's the conversation here today. Uh, before we do that, though, we're going to also have some fun. I'm going to give her a fancy introduction. She's so nervous right now. And a real, um, this woman means the world to me and my family introduction as well. So we have with us Jessica Policki, who is a board-certified nurse practitioner, fully credentialed through the American Association of Nurse Practitioners. Um, really, her bachelor's degree coming from Chamberlain College and a master's in nursing and family nurse practitioner from Olivet Nazarene University. And those are the things that we were joking about before. Um, I have them too that help us incur debt. Okay, that's what those are. But what Jessica has is just in the trenches servant-hearted experience. She has one of the most incredible, multiple incredible practices called Well-Rooted Pediatrics, and they also do Well-Rooted Functional Medicine for adults as well. And they have cared for tens of thousands of patients. From the very beginning, you have a specialty now with pregnancy and infants and wellness, and they also join us in taking care of the toughest of kiddos. When a child needs integrated functional health, there is one place literally one place that we send them and that's well rooted. So they are very sought after. They are very busy. Jessica gets as many adjustments and cups of coffee as we can give her to keep up with the demand that you awesome parents who have been searching, praying, scrolling, looking for a provider like this. And so the story that I got to set the table with is Jessica's massive rocking, um, just impacting lives practice might be my fault a little bit. <laughs> Because many years ago, um, she was working in another incredible practice that was a long ways away from where our practice is and all of our families live. And every time we went down to see her and, and, and just got to be around her heart and her, her expertise, we just really prayed. I, I literally actually prayed for Well Rooted day after day for years because our families needed you and they needed this practice up here. And so um, I don't even know how many years. Five. Okay. So five years ago, um, some things shifted here in Illinois that uh, gave the opportunity for Jessica and her crew to open up shop. And they did. And they have been busy from day one. Probably a little bit of an understatement <laughs> of that word. And I'll, I'll leave it at this. They're busy because they get results. They get results clinically. We'll nerd out with Jessica today. She's brilliant. and She knows her stuff. And then they most, I, I don't want to say most importantly, because results matter most. But equally importantly, man, do you and your team take great care of our families. You go the extra miles, plural, to make sure kids are healthy and parents are empowered. And so you're about to hear from a totally different kind of pediatric expert. Yes, she has the medical training and has the degrees and her team does. 
but what she has is what you're looking for and what you need. So Jessica, if you could go back prior to the five years, so you stepped out into this unknown of starting a practice and running a practice and doing all that. And, and that's a lot, you know, that, that, there, yeah, there's a lot to that. That's tough, you know, to another word I've probably understated there. Um, why though? There has to be a really big freaking why to take on something that big. So let us have it. What's in your heart and soul that said, we're going to do this. We're going to plant well-rooted. We're going to serve families in this way. We're going to step into the space that we know they need. What is your why and your story to this? Yeah. And I think that like we've talked before, this is definitely a multifactorial answer. Right. And I think that, you know, from the beginning, and I know your story is similar, it starts with your own and it starts with your own child and your experiences. And that's what gave me that foundation. You know, I had my daughter in 2013 and I had struggled with infertility issues prior with no known cause. Um, so working through that and integrating through holistic medicine and functional medicine and then starting in pediatrics was something for me that I struggled with because, you know, when I walked into the conventional pediatric realm, you know, these kids were on so many medications, so many antibiotics, being referred to so many specialists. And to me, I always wondered, but why? Why mm. did they need tubes? Why were these kids so sick? Why were we having recurrent fevers? So my wheels started to spin at that point. And I think with my own, I didn't want the medications. I wasn't being heard, you know, in the pediatrician's office. I was asking all these questions. And I just wasn't getting the answers that I needed or that I felt satisfied with. So luckily, I had the knowledge, which I always tell parents, it's a struggle because you don't always have that. Um, and not everybody has the experience that we do. So at that point, I became really vulnerable and thought, well, if I was a parent that had no idea how to even think outside of this box or what to expect, then how, what, what are they getting? Yeah. You know, and they're, they're being told they just have to go this direction. They don't fight it. They trust their provider. Yeah. And to me, that was a big red flag. And I said, I need to do better. Um, and so by the time I had my second, I was all into that. And yeah. I was deep diving into why things were happening. I had taken on my own clientele. I had seen the issues of where insurance was restricting the care. Yeah. And at that point, I said, I need to do better. Oh, that's another important part of the conversation. We can circle back around to. Yeah, because there's just so many things in the way of a parent and a family going in the direction they want to go, yeah. right? And and this isn't even an exhaustive list, but like in a lot of places, they haven't found you yet. They haven't right. there isn't a practitioner or they don't know of that practitioner that that shares their principles and shares this this it's not even a belief. It's just a scientific understanding of how the body actually works, right. how the body actually heals and that medications aren't always needed. Second, they are just defaulted into the system and then they know in their gut, but nobody tells them to listen to it. And then three, insurance. You know, we all work hard to take care of our family in that way, too. And insurance, it's called out. One of the worst names ever is to call that health insurance. You don't get to use it to go get healthy. You right. only get to use it when it is sickness and catastrophe. And thank God we have it in that case. You know, we our kids ride snowmobiles and four-wheelers. Sure. So <laughs> we will use our emergency systems, you know, uh, for that for sure. Um, but goodness, uh, that is the direction to really, really poor health for our families. And we don't actually need to spend any time on the stats today, right? Because I think everybody's living it. Right. And they're they're looking for that. And so getting into the thick of it, when you started to investigate that question, why are so many kids on these medications? Did you go to that next level? I know you did. So take us to what are the dangers of a child? So, so we'll kind of go into the storm and then we'll go into the good from that. So what are the dangers of a child who is just continually put on antibiotics when it's a viral infection with poor plumbing and subluxation? What are the dangers of a child who is constantly nebulizer after nebulizer, steroid med after steroid med, and, and all sorts of things you know that I don't even know? What are the dangers? What happens to their neurophysiology, to their gut, and to their immune system? When early in life, especially, let's laser in there, an infant, first 12 months, first three years of life, what is going to be the downstream effects of that for that child's health? Yeah. I mean, in, you said the first 12 months of my life. I mean, we yeah. focus on the first two years. You, you know, anything before two years is a problem it for is. us. Um, and so, you know, intelligent by design, right? So the, the gut's born leaky. It's meant to take in maternal antibodies work through the system, you know, take in antibodies from breast milk or the immune system is forming. And then if we compromise that with an antibiotic, so what's an antibiotic meant to do? It's supposed to kill things, right? By so, name. Right. <laughs> but it's, it's not 
it's not intelligent enough no. to just kill the bad. So with the bad comes the good as well. Yeah. And when you have a system that doesn't have a ton of good yeah. already, then is what happens is everything gets knocked down. And some kids have reactions from that right away and they'll end up with GI distress yeah. or diarrhea or constipation issues, but not everybody does. Yeah. And it may be months down the line and now we're developing eczema issues or we're having even more immune system challenges totally. because why? 85% of the immune system is in the gut. So now we've, we've compromised that. And what we see through functional medicine testing is we'll do stool analysis Oof. through that system and we are able to see the digestive enzymes are insufficient. There's now malabsorption issues. There's an overgrowth of pathogenic bacteria. So now everything has taken over in the bad way. Yeah. And we know that when you have an overgrowth of Campylobacter or Klebsiella or whatever the story is, it literally spirals into another It's thing. its own perfect storm. Right. So you're talking about these little ones. You just know, right? You can, so I suppose in your work, it's the same. as. So I could take a case history, which is, you know, and see all the stress they went through, all the antibiotics they put on, the birth trauma, all the sickness and struggle. And then I immediately know from the case history, we run scans. That's our version of diagnostics, which is your labs. I just know, oh, those aren't going to look. Right. And so is that the case currently in your practice with labs, like again and again and again on an 18 month old and a 24 month old, you just know that you're going to open up those, the, the analysis and you're going to see thing after thing after thing. I know exactly what I'm going to ah, say. Okay. All right. So, and that's the point. Like it should never be like No, that. it shouldn't. You shouldn't have a textbook child no. that you can say exactly where their immune system's struggling. Yeah. What is turning into yeah. what? Like, I, and I tell them, if you don't fix this now, I can tell you what your next five years is going deep. to look like. It's layers deep. And then, and not only is it going to add five years of continued struggle, it's going to add five layers deep of you and I getting it out of there. Right. It's going to make our job, um, the healing job harder. Okay, let's, let's back up before we go forward to it. So what you said there is so crucial. And I just want to explain that to parents a little bit more. So our beautiful babies, let, let's fly to the good side. So in perfect design, God's wonderful, intelligent design, they are born immature. Their nervous system is super immature. Their vagus nerve is super immature. Their microbiome in their gut is, is super immature and leaky by nature. That'd be a great, if we were ever a functional med rap gang, we could start <laughs> leaky. That's, I had, told you we were going to have fun with this, leaky by nature. Who would listen yeah. to that? I don't know. I That's think everybody good. would. So we might have to edit that out. <laughs> so, but you go through into this and you say, okay, so our immune system is immature. Our, our digestive system is immature. Our nervous system is immature. That's why we as parents, actually, here's what's really cool about this. The neurology of that is you don't need to be a nerd like Jessica and I and, and know all of this neuroscience. Innately, moms and dads, you know that. That's why you're so protective of your baby. That's why you don't want them exposed to everybody. In it. And we're not even afraid. We're not germ theory people. We're, we're fully aware of the hygiene hypothesis and that a child needs to be exposed to things to become resilient, become strong. But there's a season for that, and it's not early on. And so what they're exposed to now is medication after medication after medication, and it's getting into their gut, and it's wreaking havoc there. So let's go back to that story of what really caused... We'll just take the easy stuff. So what do you see that is actually causing... An ear infection, a sinus infection, a respiratory infection. Let's focus on that first year of life. So kiddos, six, seven, eight months, you know, maybe they had a tough birth. Their teeth are starting to come in. The seasons are changing. They've got a big sister. So like, what is the actual neurophysiological components of a respiratory infection? Yeah. And I think that could be driven by a couple different yeah. factors. But in the end of the day, I mean, the way that you guys, you know, work through your systems and explain the neurophysiological processes is they're not draining, number one. Right. But then like what is allowing that to be so constricted? Yeah. So whether it's, again, a poor gut health or mom's gut was not good during pregnancy or mom was on antibiotics or baby had forceps or I mean, we could keep going. Yeah. Right. We don't have enough time. Yeah. For that. yeah. But is what's happening is then everything's getting stuck. Uh -huh. And then through that process, their gut cannot keep up. Yeah. So if they're not, if they're given antibiotics, then we're turning into food allergies. Okay. Now the food allergies are causing inflammation yeah. and they're causing that buildup of fluid. And then Which it's building up to their ears. The next time. Correct. Okay. And so it just keeps spiraling before you know it after three, uh, three antibiotics deep conventionally for an ear infection. Now they're going to tubes yeah. or they're going to a, a tonsil and adenoidectomy and they're taking them out. And the problem is, is that sure that will band aid the solution yeah. temporarily. But it's not the fix no. because now you just took their first line of defense. Um, you've now compromised their ears and put holes in them. Yep. 
um, and expect them just to get better yep. on their own. And, and that's a lot that, of what we'll up, see. Lopped out two body parts that are not, it's not like an Ikea coffee table where you end up with an extra, you know, yeah. a couple of pieces. And you're like, oh, maybe we didn't need that. No, those tonsils, that noise, they're pretty needed, you know? Right. I mean, even yesterday I had a kiddo that, you know, had, was in for an ear infection and it was one side. And the one side always, always. kills me. And I'll, I'll tell people, I said that the number one thing that you need here is chiropractic yeah, totally. because nothing should ever be no. unilateral. No. You should be a bilateral move. Totally. So if it's both ears, I can say, okay, we got something going on. The yeah. body's doing what it needs to do. But one ear is perfectly fine. And then your, your other ears, you know. So if there's one thing, unilateral could definitely be something yeah. that you could, you know, one sided look into. But in that case, you know, he had tubes when he was three. Yeah. Yeah. And now we're six and still dealing with the same it's, problem. It's wild. So here's right? what we see all the time. So, and I know we're on a podcast. So, you know, you can maybe, if, if you can hear us talking with our hands, we are, because a lot of times <laughs> we'll draw this out for our patients, right? So, or you're on YouTube and you're like, these two are very animated. Well, we, we, we like to draw our neurophysiological <laughs> structures, you know, uh, with our hands when we don't have a whiteboard. So, what happens is a child who has this subluxation, which is a restriction of drainage, restriction of neurological function, which is then going to create restriction of gut function and inflammation. So subluxation on its own can create this whole perfect storm cascade we're talking about. And then the moment you put offending foods and medications and that in it, you have literally poured kerosene on the campfire, right? Which is not at all what you want to do. But what happens with subluxation and inflammation, which is the real root cause of an ear infection and a sinus infection, not lack of antibiotics, right? What happens then is that after three, four, five of them, and they drill the, they get the, they get the drill out, they put the holes in the tubes, they move the problem. They don't solve the problem. I need to hear. I've always taught this to people, and they're like, "Dang it, that makes too much sense." So what happens for our little ones is they're getting these ear infections, eight months, twelve months, eighteen months. They get a bunch of them. They get antibiotics. They're going to destroy the gut. With Jessica's, we're going to turn the tide here and, and talk about how to restore it and rebuild it with our expert here. Um, but after the tubes go in, they band-aid the ears and they move the congestion, mucus and inflammation to the back of the throat and the sinuses. So now the tonsils and adenoids are like, what the heck is all of this? And now the tonsils and adenoids get pissed off, get inflamed, get congested. You go back to the same pediatrician who's not looking for root cause. You go back to the same e and the ENT is like, ah, I've already done one surgery for your child. I'll give you a 20% discount to get those tonsils and adenoids out there. They don't actually even give a discount. I was just making a joke to try and lighten the mood a little bit. I don't think I did lighten the mood on that one. And so now they're just like, oh, no problem. Tonsils, adenoids, ah, I don't think you really needed those. Bye-bye. So now the child's like, oh, my ears are, or family, my ears are clearer. My throat's better. They can sleep easier at night. Those are out of the way. And then instead of having throat breathing and sinus congestion at night, they're literally coughing all the time, getting RSV, getting croup, getting freaking pneumonia and bacterial and, and, and viral infections primarily into their chest. Because if you move the fluid out of the ears, move the fluid out of the back of the throat, you've shoved it into the lungs. And here's where asthma, allergies, and I'm going to jump right to what I'm trying to make here. And now the pharmaceutical system has a lifetime customer instead of a 10 day customer. So the more that a child takes these medications and has the ear tubes and tonsils and adenoid surgery, the more they're screaming to the path of asthma, allergies, and lifelong customers. They're going to be loaded on over-the-counter medications. They're going to be taking asthma medications. And now again, if you're tracking here, even chiropractically, it's harder. Now we got to get three layers deep to get that right. subluxation intention. And, and by the way, we can, we do, and it works wonderfully. And we do it in tandem and collaboration with Jess and the functional team here. But that's what happens to the structure. And the whole time, the gut is getting assaulted with yep. that, right? Because steroid meds, can we just go there for a sec? So when a child, and, and sometimes, by the way, if we, we haven't said it yet, um, no one knows better than Jessica and her team exactly when to pull the lever and put a child on an antibiotic. Nobody knows better when to put a nebulizer and get that airway open up a bit. What's beautiful about your practice is you have those tools when you need them. Right but you don't overuse them. You know exactly when to Correct. use them. And that's what us families are looking for. But when they're overused, when even steroids and anti-inflammatories are overused, what are some long-term consequences of that? Well, first off, I mean, just taking a dose of steroids will ruin your adrenals and your cortisol <laughs> yeah, level. You know, yeah. um, so you're constantly trying to play catch up is yeah. how I explain it. And it doesn't matter. You know, some people will bounce back, you know, and this goes this goes deep into epigenetics and, and your detox pathways and what your body's yep. able to tolerate, but nothing's a one size fits yep. all. So you can give the same medication to yeah. both of them 
one may not quote unquote have any, you know, major side effects. And the other one, we're playing catch up for two years. So I think that, you know, in that state, like we know that all these things have side effects. I'm not sure that, you know, I've I've asked many people when they've gotten antibiotics or medications, like if anybody actually read the inserts and, you know, people are like, well, no, you know, I'm like, well, they they staple it to your bag, but no one ever ever looks at it. And that's just their side effects. Right. If we had like a an, another insert on what if you you know if all you the wrote, things, yeah, yeah totally you know yeah. it, it just keeps going True story. so okay. the other bodies just can't they can't handle it but there is so what happens with steroids the S's cascade together steroids are super sympathetic nervous system stimulatory so what happens now to that three year old that we kind of told in our little neurophysiological parable and now they're on steroid based medications all the time or your grade schooler is. So spring and fall is when allergies and asthma get worse. So a lot of these kids will just be loaded up on nebulizers and steroid meds all the time. That's also when school gets busier, sports get harder. So now your child is hyperactive and impulsive. So now they label your child with ADHD, which it's really just been this subluxation neurophysiological medication onslaught that overstimulated their adrenals and their sympathetic nervous system. And that's just, it's not just like ADHD shows up. No, it was created by this perfect storm going through this. So, right. all right, now let's go all the way back to the beginning with our beautiful little babies, all right? They're going to run into stuff. They're going to have teeth they are. that, that are going to create mucus and congestion. Um, they maybe did have a tough birth, right? And we need to be on the team taking care of that subluxation. They're going to have gross births. They're going to be exposed to two things that are out there. So the moment, it now let's go to the ideal. Let's go to how, I don't like the word manage. They'll go to how we take care of these with our kids. So the moment um, our kids are starting to show some congestion, show some immune challenges, what are the moves? What are the ducks you're starting to line up here to build their defense mechanisms and support them instead of, you know, annihilate them? With yeah. Them. Um, I know you guys do the same. We're not a family that takes a multiple things every no, single no, day save them for when you need um them. and that's just it yeah. you know and i we see better success of that in the office when you know patients are not mm-hmm. throwing the entire cabinet at these children every day for prevention but using them to actually help the it's, symptoms it's as important. they come yeah. so um for us i mean we just we grab we grab the the immune supplements yeah. right so we're looking at vitamin c vitamin d zinc you know unfortunately we're living in a country where our soil is super depleted of of minerals and vitamins um and our foods don't have as many of that as it used to so being able to supply those things it, when you when you do them at higher doses and short bursts, the body responds totally. and it responds really well. Yeah. Um, and if we need to, you know, hone in on on certain ones, like we can do labs, we yeah. can look through that. But, you know, for us, it's like I kind of start with the basics. We boost the immune yeah. system. But I think the biggest thing that parents try to do is they try to stop the symptoms. Yeah. So like, sure, no one wants their child to be sick. Good no point. one wants to be sick. But the body needs to get through it, yeah. right? So however it's working. And so you can support it, but the goal is not to stop it. Yeah. It's to let it ride its course, yeah. right? Obviously getting as, adjusted. As, effic- it, as effectively, efficiently, which means yeah. as fast as possible. Right. So, you know, I'll throw the kids in the sauna. We yeah. get adjusted. Perfect. We're doing the vitamins. And then if we have to bust awesome. out the bigger dogs, we're doing, you know, um, silver yeah. and we're doing oregano and we're doing the herbs that we know yeah. are antibacterial, antifungal, cool. antiviral. Cool. So, I mean, so you've got layers. Uh, yeah. This is cool. So this is my job here on this. This is so important that I, I just want to layer back through that again. So first off, like the foundational level. So those we know that a lot of you guys listening to this, you're wired just like us. You've already shifted your lifestyle. You've got a PX doctor. You're getting adjusted. You, you've got a Jessica uh, on your team. And so you already can and very much should have faith in your child's healthy body on its own. Let's just start there. Like if you were to let your child ride it out, quote unquote, on their own, you should have faith in that. God designed it to have all of these things, create all these things. If you've got good nourishment, good diet, good adjustments, all that. Jessica brought up an important point there. Our foods are different. So we can't have as much, even we're doing great, harder to do great on that in today's world with the way, and I'm a farm kid. So trust me, it is (laughs) depleted. Okay. Um, So the second thing though is, you're going to go to the basics. So we're going to get what we call a boost adjustment. So your kiddos are getting adjusted on the regular, but when they have an immune challenge, okay, let's throw an extra one in there. Now, right there, what's so cool about how these nervous system focused adjustments work, we see a child who's in an active immune response. The moment they get adjusted, their fever goes higher, their congestion goes, boom, you know, they're, they're, they're blowing loogies all over the place, right? Which is a yeah. great farmer term, my friend. <laughs> Jessica lives in the country too. So we are very synonymous on all the things. And so they can finally move that mucus along. 
we probably oftentimes, we, they'll end up needing to go to the bathroom because the mucus and the gut and all those things, 85% of it's in the gut. So they're getting rid of stuff. So we see the immune system get stronger. Then you go to the basics, vitamin C, vitamin D, and then you go to the big stuff. This is a lesson I didn't learn. When I came through the training we all have, right, going to all these oh, nutrition yeah. seminars, what the supplement sales industry and actually providers who don't operate like Jess, you're, you're unique even in this very specific space, they will tell you all winter long, take your vitamin C, take your elderberry, take your uh, you know, colloidal syrup. So what happens with healthy granola families Sometimes too much of a good thing comes into play. And if you're giving your child these immune boosters on the regular, kind of as a prevention, they're going to lose their potency because that's just how God made the body. Right. It becomes, you know, it becomes kind of a, adaptable to anything. They're going it's to lose resistance. their potency. Yeah. yeah. They're going to. So what you want to do is you want to almost like think of it this way. And we have our nature's medicine cabinet, right? That you helped right. us and, and the playbook. Uh, we'll link that in the show notes, actually, that you helped us build. Think of it like literally you open your cabinet. Now, it'd be hard to put a chiropractor in there, okay? Depending on, that was a just a funky <laughs> image, right? Okay. It's, we have fun on this podcast, all right? Tony I'm a little, out. yeah, I'm a little guy. <laughs> Depends on how big your cabinets are, right? So anyways, you can't have that in your cabinet. Okay. I, sometimes the images are in my head and I just have to say them even live on a podcast. So you have that you go to and get adjusted. But on your cabinet, like literally at the Evil household, we have a two-shelf supplement cabinet. And I'm not even kidding because it just makes it easy. The first shelf is the basics, right? Our vitamin D and our vitamin C and those things are there. And the top shelf is the more heavy hitters from sure. orthomolecular and all the places. That, and, and we go to you for that expertise. You know that stuff inside now. So you'll pair that up for us. But we don't use that second shelf very often. Right. Yeah. Okay. So You shouldn't have to. No, you shouldn't <laughs> have to. And that's, that's important. Yeah. All right. Circling back to antibiotics. So the one thing we know is that medications save freaking lives, right? You've yep. been there with our kiddos. Yep. We've been there with our own health. Um, your husband likes to fly off the front of snowmobiles and need <laughs> interventions and in those yes. things as well, too. So um, Oliver's been there. Elaine has been there. Um, you know, we've all been there and we might need to be there. So where are the places that in your guys' practice, you know, the strep and those sort of things, what needs antibiotics? And I know that's a hard question. It's an unfair question for me to ask because you're not doing a individual assessment on each child. You guys sure. personalize the heck out of all your care. So you're not going to blanket statement for everybody. But what are some common things that a parent would encounter with their child that is, okay, antibiotics are going to do their job. And then we're going to come back and rebuild after that. Yeah. Um, sure. Some people have success treating these things more naturally, but I would say it's not always like, and like with, with yeah. our recommendations, totally. but um, urinary tract infections, pneumonias, um, staph infections, more like cellulitis and things that involve soft tissue. Um, pneumonias and strep. Strep, yeah. We always said it's kind of like our, our top five. Um, and, you know, the reason I, I get it, people can do herbs, we can do the gargles, we can do all the things for strep, but mm. the amount of neurological Eesh. cases Come that on. we are now seeing due to the resistance bacteria that has now developed from strep. Yeah too high. So let's run that out. So that's a big thing. And I want to have you come back on another episode and we're going to dive deep just into pans, pandas, um, dysautonomy and pots. Let's do that. Our practices love to serve these kiddos. We we love to take on the tough stuff. Yeah. Right? You guys are right there with us. Because I know I can help them. Yeah, totally. And, and that's and, just it. Like, and, give and, it to me. And letting them go to medicine, they're going to be like, oh, yeah. you have dysautonomia. Here's some salt yeah. water. Huh? Like that's like a 1948 understanding of neurology, if we're being nice. And, um, you know, they're just going to they're going to give antibiotics where they shouldn't and they're going to miss what they need. So real quick, run that out. So if strep is left to grow and grow and grow because of its location in a neuro neck component, it's so close to the vagus nerve and it's going to shut that down and let the sympathetics go. But also it's really going to go further in your world. Right. So what is a long strep going into pants pants? Can you give us just a preview of what that is? Yeah. So the gut's likely going to be leaky because okay. we've already been on an antibiotic okay. or two prior to this. So now you take a leaky gut, you take strep bacteria. Okay. Everything has now moved through yeah. and we are now crossing that blood brain yep. barrier. And we have now ended up with what we would term a leaky brain. Okay. Okay. So with that component, we start to see these more sudden onset of symptoms. Yeah. So we're looking at, you know, neuro, um, neuro atypical, we would say for more like tics, OCD behaviors and sudden onset of anxiety. Severe anxiety. And any parent, like I had one yesterday, she's been traveling everywhere just trying to find answers and nobody's believing her because the lab test is saying that it's negative. Her kid changed overnight. Overnight. Yeah. 
And that's the biggest thing that we say is that it, it, these symptoms just they come on like wildfire and you have to put it out. So with that, we have to support the system and we have to kill that bacteria. The bacteria is very intelligent by yeah. design as well. So it doesn't know like, oh, we're sitting here in the brain and we're causing totally. problems. It develops what we would consider like these biofilms. Yeah. And I explain it almost like an aura. Yeah. So if you picture like the strep bacteria and you have this aura around yeah. it, it's now like, cool, I'm here to stay and I don't want anybody to kill me. So you can treat them with antibiotics. You can do the things, but you're not addressing that biofilm. Yeah. So we come in, we do the specialized testing. We know testing, where to go at We it. know exactly where to go. And we have success in treating that where we're, I always say it's like Pac-Man. They kind of eat away at the yeah. biofilm. They completely erupt that cell. The strep bacteria is like, okay, I surrender. Yeah. We support the body it's with beautiful. specific strains of antibiotics, like um, strep cell virus, antibi yeah. um, pro sorry, probiotics that help support the awesome. system. And then- Thrive. See that? Believe it or not, that's I mean it's uh, mind blowing. That's. Uh, I hope y'all. So you know, I know some of you are newer on this journey. So you know, we have unleashed the nerd right here, in, <laughs> and I love it because this. When you're going to take care of tough stuff like this, dysautonomia, pants, pandas, pots, uh, you have to know these layers, and you have to do it in a specific sequence. What I love about your guys' practice is um, most people who are even kind of have the you know, the branding and the positioning you do, they don't go to this level. They right. don't take their time and sequentially build these stages of healing out because, and, and you have to, because right. a child got sick, that strep pathway. So you first taught us the pathway with which it sets up shop. You have to know the intricate detail of what happens to that. So you can go back and heal it. Yeah. It's actually the same. And you know, this, we've talked about this with subluxation and dysautonomia in those kiddos, they're subluxation patterns. So in our work, it's called pattern analysis. Those are the toughest cases clinically for chiropractic because where you think that little Pac-Man sucker is, mm -hmm. is not where it is. Right. So actually their levels of vagal nerve dysfunction and their subluxation patterns lock in deeper into their neurospinal system. And so even when I first got into work, I used what you know I thought would be the key to unlock that and it's not because you're a couple layers deep. And so if you have a child, uh, we're, we're going to literally come back and do a whole episode on this stuff. But I thought it was important to go into it for five to 10 minutes because unfortunately, well, and we know we're talking about why there's so much of this. We have overused antibiotics right. so much. We have so much maternal distress and maternal inflammation. Mom's guts are so destroyed and their nervous systems are stuck in fight or flight. And then birth trauma is wreaking havoc on the upper cervical messing with the nervous system, messing with the vagus nerve, messing with drainage. And so you have, it, we, if we take the perfect solar and we simplify it to three, it's that. Stressful pregnancy, birth trauma to the upper cervical, and then overuse of antibiotics. So that's right. these kids. And I want to touch on that for yeah. a second, not to interrupt you, but, you know, with the overuse, yeah. I think what's different from our office as well is that we, just like you guys, we round table cases. Yeah. Right. And we meet often yeah. and we are focused on the child. Like yeah. that is our goal Always. all the time, 100%. So we stopped actually using the number one line treatment for treating strep is penicillins, amoxicillins. We stopped using those for treatments close to a year ago because we were seeing the kids coming back. Yeah. And, some, and, and then, then now we're developing the auras and now we're becoming resistant in the body because that strep was there too long and these kids were turned. So you picked up on out. this pattern as a So team. we picked up on this pattern and we said, we have to, we have to switch gears. So awesome. we developed a different protocol for that. Cool. And when people go to urgent cares and they're doing this, because that happens and, you know, office, trust Strap me, I would, I would love to be open 24 yeah, totally, hours, 365 totally, totally. days yeah, a year. But, yeah. you know, they, they end yeah. up in these positions. So I'm glad that you said the, the misuse and the overuse, because we are starting to see that resistance through bacteria strains, yeah. um, which is super unfortunate, but we knew it was coming. Yeah, big time. All right. So, you know, kind of going around third base here on this, ah, this episode, I could do this for literally 10 hours and jam <laughs> with you. So just know this, Jessica is going to be a regular contributor of this awesomeness here. So if you have, you know, while you're listening to this and going through this, we're going to share tons of clips on our social media. you got to be following us on uh, at PX Docs on Instagram, Dr. Tony and the PX Docs on Facebook. Check out everything on YouTube. We're going to link all of Jessica and her team socials as well. So make sure you follow her, watch her videos. She does a ton of awesome like Facebook lives and live webinars and tons of resources. But what I want you to do when you find that content is go ahead and send us DMs, send us comments of different conversations that you need someone like Jessica. Guys, this podcast is for you. We're lining up the episodes at all times based upon what we know you need most, okay? So Jessica has a wealth 
of knowledge. She could take really every challenge that kids are going through and we can go to this level of depth, which is why we trust her. Just today, literally when we get done, I'm going to sit down and tell you all about two really, really tough cases that I need to get to you tomorrow, right? Because you're the only one that can handle them. So anyways, follow this on socials, review this thing, reach out to us and ask your questions and we can schedule it up. This is, you know, this homie lives here. You know, we're, we're both uh, Chicago suburb uh, crew here. So we can come back and do that. So, all right. What I want to do is, is we went into the reality of, hey, antibiotics in an emergency situation, like the top five you said, they save lives. Antibiotics used for ear infections and all the other scenarios, like millions of times, misused, overused, they wreck lives. They really, really wreck lives. They do. Okay. And so there was no way we could say it other than exactly that. And so parents, you need a provider who you can trust to do this detailed, granular decision-making with you. Now, I want to get your take on that word versus for you. What I love about you guys as providers is you form a partnership with your parents. Right. You take education and empowerment really seriously. You take your time. You're busy because you're getting results. You're also busy because you take your time with your patients, right? You're not just, you um, just yeah, you're not, a yeah. you're not dictating their care. You're partnering with their care. Why is that so important for kids' health going forward that we educate and empower their parents? You do workshops with us, right? Like there's right. so much. Why is that such a passion of yours? Well, I think just seeing these kids that are just at a point where they're just, everybody's treated the same yeah. and nobody's looking into the challenges that we're facing and why more challenges now than, before, you know, years and years prior. I mean, we can go on for another 10 hours about that, but we have to take each case individually and we have to know that okay, maybe there was no issues up until here. Maybe there was the sudden change. Yeah. Like I'm going to treat the kid overnight change different than I'm going to treat the kid who struggled from birth. So you have to look at all of the things. Mm. And for us, I will say, honestly, the biggest thing that allows us to do that is the fact that we don't take insurance. That's true. Because yeah. I can spend the time. I don't have to see a patient every 10 minutes and bill for that. Yeah. Like I am, a, I am giving you that a lot of time and we are focusing on it. And... We are able to be getting a hold of after that. So yeah. we have our triage team totally. and we have our email systems and we have our follow ups. And, you know, I'll tell parents sometimes, you know, hey, I just need you to check in with me next week. Like you're not paying me anything, but I need to know that I'm on the right path because if you're not successful, yeah. I'm not satisfied. Yeah. And that's what I say. Like I live for this. Yeah. We live. We have Ugh. that passion. And so like when I tell parents, like I can promise you when we talk in six weeks, you're going to be, your, your, this, your symptoms are going I, to be on the, on the right track. And I'm, I can assure that yeah, yeah. because I know that we are yeah. on the right track. And that's, your, and, and that's the job that you love to do. And then we'll honestly say this too, that we love our families. And so in our practice, we have changed all the verbiage and all the words. And I know you guys have too, right? Because we do this part of life together as well. We've changed the verbiage to what we call value exchange, which simply says, all right, insurance has no value in this work. In fact, it's actually an obstruction. Right. And I, I can really say this. It really gets in the way because insurance, which does not at all, not even close, have the best interest for the health of your child in mind, they dictate care. You will go down the road of sickness and illness. So what you want to look for in a practitioner, and I know this sounds like this isn't what you would think that Jess and I would say, but it's so true. The cheat codes, you could, if, if you want a practitioner who really gets results for your child, who really gets to the root cause, who really tells you the truth and partners with you, you're actually looking for a cash pay practitioner. Yeah. It's actually a real significant warning sign that if your chiropractor, your functional med, if they accept insurance, they have accepted someone else telling them what's best for your child, someone else telling them how to run their practice. And I don't think we're shocking parents with this last part of the conversation. It, not our world, but the rest of the, the other side of it, it is an absolute system, not run by results. In fact, it, it, it's better for the system if your child is sick. And the truth of the matter is there's people who are, have freaking spreadsheets and calculators telling the providers what to do. Okay? Yeah. And so the hearts are gone. I, I don't know that the practitioner is on the front line of that. I, I think it's almost worse for them. I have friends right. from, I'm sure you do too, right, who practice in that typical model. And they are... Miserable. I have classmates from undergrad who went into medicine 
and, and I see it. They literally look 25 years older than me. You know, um, yeah. I'm 42 and they look, you know, 142. But you're at the insurance's wrap for it's everything. Wild. Like you're just at their hand. And, you know, excuse me, but, you know, even having to fight for like a certain test that I want yeah. that it has to go through insurance or whatever the story is. There's times I'm sitting there having to just prior off, prior off, write letters, do this, submit this, submit, because I'm there to advocate for the child. And I have somebody behind a desk telling me that that's not, that's not the test they want to do I first. Know. Like, oh, but that's the test that I want that's, to do. Right. And also, when you're, and busy, it's hard. <laughs> when you're busy doing that, buddy, you're not. Yeah. That's taking time away from being face to face with parents. So care. we have to just we have yeah. to. And I tell parents, I wouldn't do anything for you Same. that I wouldn't do Same. for my own. To the T. To the freaking T. Yeah. My own children, yeah. my own family. Yeah. So it's, it's hard because I think that so many parents have been um, led to mistrust yeah. providers. So here they come in and I'm like, oh, you need to trust me. Yeah. Right. It's hard. It, yeah, it, it takes time for us to get there yeah. and explain that process. It's OK to have, be reserved, yeah. but also like be open minded to know that like Love. we are different. Yeah. We're not like your your typical in yeah. and out office. No. And that's why, you know, so so the questions we get all of the time, right, are how do I find, you know, obviously, because we're talking so much about nervous system focused chiropractic, but we we knew this podcast were coming. We're talking about everything your children need to heal, live natural, and be this way. So we need the Jessicas. We need the Josh. And Josh Axe is coming on and, and other friends to do this too. But we are all in this way. We're all wired the same in that we're going to do everything it takes and allow nothing to get in the way to get your family results because we're going to take care of your children literally like ours. So you can trust anybody, parents on this podcast. This is me talking to you. If you've given us the, the, the incredible exchange of your time and your heart listening to this podcast, this is the only kind of provider or person we're going to bring on and connect you to someone who really, truly does take the time to listen, someone who really does get to the root cause, someone who really does empower, educate, inform, and partner up with you and the rest of your care team to get full optimal healing for your kiddo. It's hard making these decisions. Not just what to do. Hey, am I going to, you know, add this to our diet or add this to the supplements? The hardest thing and really the most important decision we can make as families is who our providers are and who we're going to trust. So we are going to continually earn your trust through this podcast as we give you hope, answers, and drug-free help. And we bring these episodes to you. We bring these experts like Jess to you. We bring the empowered parents like Tracy and Jackie and everybody else to you. Stick to this to know who to partner with for your kids' health. So Jess, you did such an incredible job today, just like you do one-on-one -on -one with every single patient we send to you. You gave them so much deep information, but most importantly, you continue to be able to empower and help parents move in that forward direction. So we know that we got a lot of families listening who maybe are just getting started, right, with this process. And so they're new to our world that we love. So to them and to everybody else, what would be your send off? What would be your kind of take home message from our conversation today? Yeah, I would just encourage every parent to continue to find answers. So trust your gut. No one knows that intuition more than you do as a parent. Um, and I empower every parent to just continue to fight for that, you know, and plant the seed. You know, that's why we say like, share these videos, share yeah. these, share these podcasts, share whatever, because one person... Oh listening can be a life changed. Yeah. Right. And that's all we can hope. And that's all we can pray for. And your child means the world to us. And that is what we do. And until your child's better, not, you know, until we kind of get those results, like we're not happy with where we're at either. Um, so just continue to fight, be their advocate. If it doesn't seem right, move on. Um, but we're here. We're here to answer questions. We're here to help you um, and guide you to the best provider that you can get to. Yeah. The, the rallying cry for the podcast is hope, answers, and drug-free help. But underneath that, what motivates us every single day is every kid counts. And that's just literally tattooed on our hearts and, and, and in our plan. And that means every parent listening counts. I love what you just said. That is so perfect. Every single share is literally that potential connection point to getting a child and a family out of the storm. Because remember, when our kids get sick, when our kids get stressed, we're right in it with them. And it really affects our health and the full family. And, and, and it can go on for generations. So we're here to get you through the storm, out the storm, and whatever it takes. We're, we're annihilating subluxation. We're chipping away at biofilm. You name it. We got it. We'll cover it on this podcast. And we'll always make sure that you can take action. The action we need from you 
to make sure that we find as many kids and share this Hope Answers and Drug-Free Help with them is to go to the podcast, pick your favorite platform, wherever you're at now, and subscribe. Make sure you see every episode as soon as it comes out. Leave us a review. Um, put, hit the little button, copy it, send it to Instagram, send it to your group chat. I know you've got group chats, mom. I know you're out there, all right? Drop it in the group chat and say, hey, you've got to listen to this. Go to YouTube, check out the videos. There's tons of educational videos on there. Get to the website, check out the articles. We talked about the webinar we're gonna do with Jessica and get that rocking. Whatever you need for continued resources, we will provide it. You can send us a DM. If you don't find it, send us a DM and dang it, we'll make it. And most importantly, continue to make connections to your PX doctors, to the well-rooted of the world, because in person, in action there locally, that's where you're going to get those results. So we're here for that every episode, every single time. Parents, you've got this. We've got you. God's got us. Let's get this done. We'll see you on the next one.